It is now the time for member statements. I recognize the member from St. Catharines. Thank you, Speaker. This morning, I decided to write a new statement to reflect on Niagara's Women Leadership Summit that I have had a chance to attend this week. They spoke about a need to knock down barriers for women in politics. Speaker, I get it. I am currently the only female representative in higher office in the Niagara area. Before that, I was often one of two women at the table for St. Catharines City Council, and before me, I watched great women in politics succeed in the Niagara, despite barriers like Cindy Forrester, Susan Vendetti, Pat Lindell. I am certainly certain they face discrimination, and I stand on their shoulders to do what I do today. To the women that want to step up and lead, here is a message from a veteran female politician who often felt like they were doing it all alone. We need you. Be strong. Always engage, because we need your experience today. It is more important than ever. It is about she recovery, child care, and, the, and pay equity for work-dominated women, like frontline staff in nursing homes. The pandemic has put pressures on these gaps, but there will be a time when they slip away again. We need more women in leadership roles to make sure that does not happen. We need more women in politics. The issue that women shoulder will only get better with more more women having their voices counted in more places. Member statements. I recognize a member from Perry Sound, Muskoka. Thank you, Madam Speaker. As we celebrate Waste Reduction Week, Ontario is finally moving towards holding producers responsible for the waste they create and encouraging innovations in compostable packaging. These are two ideas I brought to the Ontario Legislature as private members' bills. In 2005 and again in 2007, I introduced a private members' bill designed to develop regulations setting hard targets for recycling and requiring producers of products and packaging to be responsible for their recycling and their products and to achieve those targets. That was more than 15 years ago. The previous government talked about creating a circular economy but didn't do it. Then three years ago, I toured Muskoka Roastery in Huntsville and learned about certified compostable coffee pods they use. It's an Ontario innovation produced by Club Coffee in Etobicoke using technology created by the University of Guelph. In an effort to prevent millions of plastic coffee pods from filling landfills across Ontario, I introduced the Reducing Waste One Pod at a Time Act in the fall of 2017. I was pleased to join Environment, Conservation and Parks Minister Jeff Urick at Club Coffee three weeks ago to announce his proposed regulations designed to increase organics collection and encourage compostable packaging. Keeping organic waste out of landfills will help Ontario reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. Both of these ideas came from constituents. Dr. Jim McTaggart Cowan told me about product stewardship and, as I say, Muskoka Roastery introduced me to compostable coffee pods. I'm proud to be part of a government that is acting on these ideas to reduce waste, in Thank particular you. plastic waste, and finding ways to create jobs Thank you. while protecting the environment. And thank you, the Minister of Europe. Uh, member statements. I recognize the member from Brampton Centre. Thank you, Speaker. It's an honour to rise here on behalf of the good people of Brampton Centre and raise some alarming concerns. We've been hearing from drivers um, who have been faced with increased premiums throughout this pandemic. Rather than actually regulate the rates and ensure that drivers um, would receive a discount rather than an increase, this government has chosen to do nothing. These rates are not just rising in Brampton Centre, Speaker. They are rising across the province, all the way down to Collingwood and beyond. And yet, this government hears these concerns in all of these ridings and does nothing. And it's not just drivers, Speaker, that are facing increased insurance premiums. We also heard from the taxi and limo industry, who some aren't able to even drive and earn a living right now and are yet forced to pay increased premiums. Not just people on the road, we've heard from small business owners who are forced to close their doors given these increased costs. And yet, when this government has the opportunity to do something and regulate those rates and help those small businesses out with two different pieces of legislation that you brought forward, you did nothing. You're allowing these companies to continue to profit and benefit 
through this pandemic while hard-working everyday Ontarians are suffering. Small businesses are in dire need of assistance, and rather than actually create legislation or packages that will actually help those companies out, your government sits here in silence and allows these companies to continue to profit. So I urge you, I urge you, Speaker, to implore this government to do the right thing and regulate these rates before it's too late. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Sarnia Lambton. Well, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, and uh, uh, I'm pleased to rise today and recognize the outstanding work of two leaders in Sarnia Lambton. On September the 17th, Mike Lapine, President and CEO of Blue Water Health, was awarded the International Association of Business Communicators Communications Champion Award for recognizing the value of communications to his organization for his exceptional leadership. <laughs> communication both in ordinary times and during COVID-19 pandemic. Julia Oosterman, Chief of Communications and Public Affairs at Blue Water Health, was also recognized by the IABC with the Outstanding Communicator Award. Ms. Oosterman received the top honour for consistently achieving business results through excellent communication strategies, employing communications as a force for good in her community, implementing an ethical framework at Blue Water Health, and inspiring <coughs> a high level of transparency during the pandemic. I want to personally congratulate Mr. Lapine and Ms. Oosterman on being selected for these awards. Their professionalism and leadership at Blue Water Health has become a tremendous asset for the Sarnia Lambton community. I can personally vouch for their unwavering commitment to excellence in communications. Mr. Lapine and Ms. Oosterman have always made themselves available to answer questions or to assist my staff in finding supports and solutions for local issues. As the MPP for Sarnia Lambton, congratulations to both Mike and Julia on your well-deserved awards. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member Statements, the member for Davenport. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and good morning. It's really an honour to be here today to rise, to give voice to the frustrations that my constituents are sharing with me over this government's misplaced priorities. People in Davenport are struggling, like folks across this province, with the reality of a resurgent COVID-19, adding to the concern about their own family's health and safety. They're worried about what will happen to their jobs and if support will be there if they lose their jobs. People hit hard by the first wave and government inaction are still living in tents in local parks, in my community, as the weather grows colder, and small businesses don't know how they're going to make it through to the next month. But instead of supporting our communities during the biggest challenge they've ever faced, the Premier and this government are once again targeting local democracy, banning the use of ranked ballots in municipal elections and overriding the rights of the people to determine how they choose their own representatives. Speaker, Torontonians, people across this province, want this government to get out of the business of meddling in our local democracy. They want them to scrap their attack on ranked ballots and fund the transit, the housing, and support for small businesses that we so desperately need at this time. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member Statements. The member for Ottawa South. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I'd like to say a few words to the family of Abdi Rahman Abdi who tragically died on July 24, 2016, as the result of a violent arrest. Something that should never have happened. It's been a long four years, and I know that this week in particular is very difficult for you, your friends, and the community. You are left still seeking justice. And I want you to know that the fight against systemic racism and bias will and must continue, both in our institutions and ourselves. Bias is the enemy of justice, and bias is something that's part of the human condition. It's in every one of us. It's the way that we're made. And only by the process of self-examination and examining our institutions can we take the necessary action to promote justice and safety for all. That's the obligation of every one of us in this legislature and everyone in a position of power. And I want you to know that we stand with you and the friends of Abdi Rahman in continuing to seek justice in his name. Thank you, Speaker. The 
The member for Aurora Oak Ridges, Richmond Hill. Thank you very much, sir. Speaker, tomorrow, Friday, October 23rd, we celebrate Lauren Harris Day. Lauren Harris was a well-respected Canadian painter who was born in Brantford, Ontario. He was best known as an original member of the legendary Group of Seven and is credited with being a driving force behind its formation. Lauren Harris was a pioneer when he came to truly appreciating the uniqueness of our Canadian landscapes and recording, and recording them in a distinct style that is appreciated worldwide. Speaker, among his work are many paintings of beautiful Ontario landscapes. I'm proud to say that York Region is home to the McMichael Canadian Art Collection, which showcases many beautiful art pieces created by the Group of Seven, including works from Lauren Harris himself. The McMichael Gallery is a proud contributor to the cultural identity of not only Ontario, but all of Canada. It acquires, preserves, and exhibits artwork from artists and contributes to the development of Canadian art with a focus on the Group of Seven and Canada's Indigenous peoples. One of the McMichael's current exhibitions is A Light Vision, The Group of Seven at 100. Speaker, Canadians such as Lauren Harris will forever be embedded in the cultural fabric of Ontario for his irreplaceable contributions to the development of the distinctly Canadian painting style that is appreciated across the world today. Thank you very much, Speaker. Thank you. Member's statements. The member for Toronto, Danforth. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, it didn't have to be this way. We weren't prepared for COVID, and now we are paying the price. People are dying, lives are upended, social relations are strained, and our economy is suffering. We went through SARS. We saw the impact of a brand new breath-borne disease on our society. We studied the effects. Reports were written, and some steps were taken, but big steps were ignored or dismantled. Stocks of PPE were acquired and allowed to fritter away, to disappear, so that when COVID hit in the spring, we didn't have the essential equipment that our frontline workers needed. Vietnam, South Korea, Taiwan all learned the same lessons from SARS, and they successfully applied those lessons to reduce the impact on human life and on their economies. In the spring, we knew there would be a second wave, and this government didn't prepare for it. Hiring more PSWs started after the second wave hit. The ramp-up of testing and contact tracing started after the second wave hit. The virus is rampaging again through our long-term care facilities, and they aren't prepared. Speaker, the negligence is shocking unpardonable and a damning indictment of this government. Member for Northumberland, Peterborough South. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to thank the many people who participated in our recent fall food drive to support our local food banks. Mr. Speaker, with the onset of COVID-19, the need has never been more real in the community of Northumberland, Peterborough South. And after Thanksgiving, the opportunity to restock the shelves has been challenged by the COVID-19 pandemic. But I'd like to thank our amazing community that came together, specifically all the farmers who donated pumpkins, who were given out free in return for a food donation, Kent Farms, Garden Hill Farmers Market, Gordon Sherry Robinson, Burnham Family Farm Market, Cricklewood Farms, Cheer Farms, and Vanderview Farms. Mr. Speaker, this wouldn't have been made possible without the many amazing locations throughout my riding where we ran our food bank. No Frills in Brighton, Coburg Foodland, Norwood Foodland. Special thank you for some amazing donations to Guardian Pharmacy in Port Hope, to Jim Corcoran from St. Anne's Spa, to Pet Valley Port Hope, Maple, Maple View Retirement Home, and of course, Coburg Foodland. Mr. Speaker, the food banks of Clarington East, Ashfordville Norwood Ministerial Food Bank, and Food for All Northumberland do a remarkable job serving constituents in need in my community, and I'd like to thank them and their volunteers for all the work that they do. Thank you. Next member's statement, the member for Peterborough Coworth. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's an honour today to rise to talk about a friend of mine. Way back in 1990, during my first year at university, I worked part-time at a local pizzeria named Dexter's Pizza. We were walking distance from Trent's main campus. 
That's where I first met Ed Hum. Ed owned a company named Far East Entertainment. He placed video games at different locations. Ed put Street Fighter in our restaurant. Ed's family also owned a local restaurant for more than 80 years. Some of you may have heard of it. It's uh, fairly popular in our community, High Tops. His grandfather started it. It was passed on to his father, Paul, and eventually on to Ed. Ed also owned a number of coin laundries, and he was very unique in the naming of them. There was Washomat, Washomat on Water, and Washomat on Park. Despite all of his business success, though, what he was most proud of was his family. He doted over his daughters, Ashley, Alyssa, and Victoria. And when Ashley became the first Hum family member to be accepted at university, he went on and on about how proud he was of her. Ed was diagnosed with testicular cancer just over three years ago and unfortunately succumbed to the disease last Thursday. Ed is only seven years older than me, and that is far too young for someone who's done so much for our community to leave us. Thank you very much.